Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ripiron, and today we're going to be doing another tier list of Killing Floor 2. This is, once again, the perks, because some of the perks have been changed, or some of the classes have been changed, and we're going to talk about each of them, and rank them where I think they'll be. Now, once again, I'm still going to say that there is no D-rank perks in Killing Floor. All of the perks are viable, some more than others, and we'll be going over their specific strengths and weaknesses. So let's begin with Berserker. And Berserker, last time I said, was easily S-tier. And they really were at that time, because you had such a strong kit. You had pretty much everything you could ever want. You have bonus damage resist. You have uh, fast movement speed. You have health regen. You had... Uh, even more damage mitigation with abilities and high damage with your weapons. You were really good at any point in the game. You were very strong early on because you didn't have to rely on the team at all. You were also very strong at the end of the game because you were really strong against pretty much any of the bosses, barring one or two depending on the map, but you were a very strong class. Since this last patch, Berserker has been nerfed quite a bit. Um, you no longer have as many options to pick from where before your health regen was quite good, now it's not as strong, you don't have nearly as much damage mitigation as you used to. You still have damage, you're still a pretty solid all-around class, and you can still tank as well as if you have a competent team, and you stay with your team, you can do well, especially if you want to play as like a gatekeeper to a certain area, you can do very well in that role. Um, and if you want to go a dedicated tank, you can also do pretty well, as long as people on your team are willing to uh, hang around and heal you. You're probably going to use up the most healing, which makes it so if you have multiple medics on the team, that's going to help, or multiple people going with medic weapons, that's also going to help. And um, you still can fend for yourself pretty well, and for quite a while, you're still probably one of the last people that's going to die during a team fight, or one of the first people that's going to die during the wave. Uh, it just depends. I still think Berserker's a pretty solid overall class. I wouldn't say that they're S tier anymore, though. I would say that they're probably a solid A tier. They still have some pretty good strengths, and if you want to build a full tank build, they're still pretty strong, but they're not nearly as strong as they used to be. Um, Berserker has seen better days, so let's move on to the next class being Commando. Now, the only real thing that changed about Commando in this update is that they got the FAMAS, which isn't going to really be a meta weapon for Commando, so other than that, nothing really changed. They still have the same strengths and weaknesses that they did before. Your one major strength as Commando is that you can extend Zed time, which can be useful, but it becomes less and less useful the more and more competent your team is. If your team is extremely competent, you do not need Commando at all. And one thing that I don't really like about the extended Zed time is that it can noticeably increase the time it takes to actually finish a match. If I'm playing 10 rounds and we're doing this Hell on Earth in one of my live streams, or even Suicidal in one of my live streams, it's not uncommon if we have a commando or multiple commandos in our group for the match to last over an hour. Whereas if we didn't have them, the match would only last 45 minutes or so. So it extends it for a considerable amount of time that doesn't really help you. If your team is doing well, then you don't really need a commando. If your team isn't doing well, then commando can be pretty good. Um, I don't really buy the fact that a lot of people had said that Commando turns your team into Superman for a while because you don't need to be Superman. If you're killing people, you're doing it right. And I think that Commando gets a bit overhyped. I'd still probably put it in A tier, but I'd put it at the very low end of A tier. If they ever take away or reduce the uh, Z time increase, then I'm going to say Commando is probably the worst class or one of the worst classes because there's really no reason to play it at that point. Right now, Commando is kind of just sitting on that line and I honestly would put it a bit lower if your team is competent. I'd probably put in something like B tier. Up next is support, and support really didn't get changed in this patch. They got the Blast Brawlers and the FAMAS, neither of which are going to be meta weapons for support. Support still fills the same role. They still give everybody uh, bonus ammunition. They still do pretty high damage towards everything. They can still weld up doors, and they always provide value even if they're, they themselves aren't doing all that well. Your support can die every single wave and still be completely useful for the team. Support has some really strong weapons. They don't really have any bad maps that they play on either. They are pretty much always welcomed into the team and they're overall a pretty solid class and uh, probably up into high end of A tier. I'd put them above Berserker and I'd put them definitely above Commando. Up next we have Medic. Medic did get nerfed in this last patch where Medic's symbiotic healing was reduced so you can no longer heal as well if you're healing allies. That's not a huge issue with Medic. You're usually going to be at full health anyway if you're healing people. Um, or you're just going to take Resilience and not care about the extra damage you're taking because you have damage reduction then. 
and they also lost their overall total armor. This really didn't change Medic at all. Medic is slightly less tanky than they were before. They're still probably the most tanky class in the game, and they provide the most utility out of any class in the game. Uh, even if your Medic isn't doing particularly well, even if they're getting off some heals, that's still pretty useful. You can also pick whatever weapons you want with Medic. I would recommend taking one or two Medic weapons, maybe just one if you're going to go with the Heal Thrower, because that, pre that pretty much is two medic weapons in one. They are still probably one of the strongest, if not strongest overall class for the team, and they're pretty good by themselves just because it takes forever for them to die. They have all the bonus healing, they have reduced time on their heals, they have still bonus armor, they have damage resistance if you go with resilience, or even more health. They're overall just a really solid class, and they're still probably the best class in the game at the moment. Uh, up next we have Demo. And Demo is an incredibly fun class. I really enjoy using them, but Demo does have some weaknesses. Um, the main two being that you are pretty squishy and you can blow yourself up. Now, if you're good with Demo, you don't have to worry about the second one. You're probably not going to be blowing yourself up or not blowing yourself up as often, simply because you know the range that you're safe to sit at or uh, how far to sit away from your C4 or something like that. You could also just go with weapons that are very unlikely to hurt you, like the Kaboom Stick can't hurt you, the Grenade Pistol can't hurt you. Um, you're very unlikely to get yourself hurt by, like, the RPG or the Gravity Imploder. So if you're going with weapons like that, then you really won't have to worry about that. That still doesn't make up for the fact that you still are squishy. You have base HP, you have base armor, and you have base movement speed no matter what you do. Uh, you do have your passive that makes it so you can survive one hit that would kill you which can be really good. It can really come in clutch. Um, other times it does absolutely nothing if you get vomited on or lit on fire. You could just die a few seconds later. You still have some weaknesses as demo. Your biggest strength is that you do uh, an incredibly high amount of damage to anything that you hit. It really doesn't matter what you hit with demo, you're going to hurt it. Um, even if you're still just using the grenade pistol, you're going to hurt whatever you're firing at. And you can rack up some serious damage as well as some serious AoE with Demo. Demo's overall a solid class, but I would say on the weaker end of classes, um, at least currently, just because of how squishy it is. So I think it's a B tier perk. It's still a really solid perk and probably one of the funnest perks to play, but um, not one of the strongest necessarily. Up next we got Firebug. Firebug has pretty much not been changed except for them getting the uh, Thermite Boar added with this next patch. Oh, I should have mentioned with these two classes too, both Support and Demo got buffed in this last patch. Demo got buffed slightly with a uh, level 10 to their more ammo perk, so you get even more ammo with it, which is a little bit better, but it still doesn't really change Demo all that much. Support did get buffed in their level 5 perk to where now uh, clip-fed shotguns are even better, so the A12, the Medic Shotgun, the HZ-12, Nail Gun, all of them are much better on Support, which is always a good thing. It's not like they were bad before. That is another strength of Support is they don't really have any bad weapons. You can build them however you want, and they'll pretty much work all the same. Uh, Firebug also got, I guess, a minor increase with a new weapon added, being the Thermite Boar, which is just the Fire Seal Squeal. Uh, very strong weapon for Firebug, very good. Firebug has really just been getting a whole bunch of good weapons. Uh, every time they seem to add a new weapon, it's usually pretty good for Firebug. And Firebug is a pretty solid overall class right now. They are incredibly good at killing small enemies, and they're decently good at killing large enemies as well. They can kill Flesh Pounds and Scrakes without too much trouble if they're running weapons like the Microwave Gun, the Husk Cannon, uh, the new Thermite Bore, or the Helios Rifle. They're going to be killing a lot of the small Zeds, and it's really not uncommon to see Firebug at the top of the leaderboard in terms of kills. They're just so efficient at it. They also have really good uh, early game weapons, which helps them deal with pretty much everything. And they do have some perks that help them uh, excel in certain areas, like being able to push enemies out of the way uh, with their level 20 perk. The main drawback to Firebug is that, once again, you're kind of squishy and you have base movement speed. Firebug is potentially A tier. I would actually put it above Commando in terms of killing power and in terms of how good your team is, so long as you are good with Firebug. Now... That can be a little bit difficult at times. Sometimes firebugs can enrage a lot of things. They can also light themselves on fire. And like I said, you are squishy. Now, I honestly don't really see a reason not to put firebug into A tier if I'm going to put commando into A tier with good faith. 
Um, I think that Firebug is better than Commando if your team is competent again. If you have a decent Firebug, it's generally going to be more useful than a Commando most of the time. And I know that's not necessarily a popular opinion. Up next, we have Gunslinger. And Gunslinger is still a really strong class. It didn't get changed really at all, so you still have the most DPS. You still have a ton of movement speed, and that's really the only two things that you need. You also just have a really nice and easy perk setup where... You pretty much play with one build, but it's the strongest build in the game, more or less. Gunslinger is still probably at the very top of S tier. Uh, depending on situation, it could be higher or lower than Medic. It just depends. Uh, you're going to do way more damage than Medic. You're just not as tanky as Medic, so it kind of depends more on the map at that point. If you're on small maps, I'd say Medic's better. If you're on big maps, Gunslinger's better. Up next, we have Sharpshooter, and Sharpshooter, again, didn't really get changed in this patch. They're still a pretty strong overall class. You just don't see them very often. Um, they kill large Zeds very easily. Their main drawback is that they're squishy and that they kind of have to rely on the team. Now, that's not to say Sharpshooter can't kill some of the small stuff. They absolutely can. They do probably the most amount of damage per shot out of anybody, uh, besides maybe demo in certain instances. But they are a more highly specialized class. You don't see them played a whole lot. Um, and you could also argue because Gunslinger does their job, but better. Right now, Sharpshooter, honestly, I feel like it needs something else to kind of make it more uh, viable. Either even more movement speed so that it can at least kind of keep up with Gunslinger and be more of a highly specialized class but still have some movement speed or it needs to become tankier or it just needs some better weapons included into it so that you don't have to rely on the team as much for killing small stuff. Now you could go with like the M14 which is a pretty popular weapon for Sharpshooter uh, that at least that I see people using. I still don't think the M14 is a great weapon for Sharpshooter. Um, I think you have better options than that. But it makes sense if you play a lot of pub matches and people just aren't watching your back or anything. It's probably your best weapon, besides maybe the FAL, for just killing small enemies. So I understand why it gets picked that much. But uh, if your team is, again, competent and can keep the sharpshooter out of danger, the sharpshooter can kill all the large things and still be a very strong uh, class overall. So I think I'm actually going to move Sharpshooter down from where it was and put it into high B tier. Up next we have SWAT, and SWAT did get buffed in this last patch, not in terms of stats or abilities or anything like that, but they did get a new weapon and a very strong weapon at that. It's the HRG Bastion, which is a fantastic weapon for them. It makes SWAT into even more of a tank slash pseudo tank class. I would just say the SWAT is a tank class overall. And that's probably the best way to build SWAT currently. Just build it as a tank class that's mostly used for killing trash enemies. SWAT does have a big advantage at the very start of a match because you get so much bonuses out of it, more so than pretty much any other class, and you are one of the most likely to survive the first wave, where you have the MP7 that's really good against small enemies, you have dual pistols, which gives you extra value, you get bonus damage with those pistols and with your knife, so the first few waves are very easy for you. You get uh, maximum armor or almost maximum armor for you. Getting 100 armor at the start of the match and enemies have to break your armor before they can touch your health. You have a lot going for you at the very start of the match. The main problem with SWAT is that the longer the match goes on, the more and more you drop off. And it's not as considerable as some people make it out to be. Your weapons don't do as much damage as others. A lot of people like to compare SWAT to Commando, and in that respect, I feel like they're both not the best at killing small enemies. I feel like Firebug does that much better. And you do have some utility for the team. You do have Flashbang still that can stun large enemies. Um, like I said, you are more of a tank now. Uh, like I said, you do have some options, and since they've been giving SWAT more options, they are steadily getting better, but I still feel like they need something more to actually get them as strong as they could be. Uh, maybe if they gave it to where you could give armor to allies or something like that, that would increase SWAT's uh, usefulness. Or maybe if you just gave SWAT bonus movement speed as well, that would probably make them a lot better. So I feel like SWAT is still probably the weakest overall class in the game right now, and I'd put them in C tier, but they're not terrible. I want to get that across. SWAT is not a terrible class, but it's not one of the strongest classes either. It's a great class to start out the game with, uh, in Wave 1, they're arguably the strongest class in the entire game. And then the very last class that gets trash-talked a lot is uh, Survivalist. 
often being called the absolute worst perk uh, in the game, and it's certainly not. It's actually probably one of the better ones now. Uh, it's tanky. It has an extreme amount of flexibility. It's honestly probably one of the best perk decks in the game once you are comfortable at playing the actual game. Uh, it gives you so much variety and gives you so much utility that you can do pretty much everything. Uh, if you want to kill small enemies, you can. If you want to kill large enemies, you can. If you want to go with some heavy loadouts, you can. If you want to go with light loadouts, you can. If you want to play medic, you can. You can mix this up with other things, so you could be a big uh, Zed killer. Naturally, now you're actually probably tankier than Berserker, where you have uh, passive damage resist, you have uh, the SWAT's level 5 effect of they have to break your armor before they can even hurt you, you have Gunslinger's reload time and Z time, so you can reload your weapons during that time. And you're all around a pretty solid class. I don't know why people don't like Survivalist as much, especially now since it's so strong. And I would put Survivalist probably up into A tier above Berserker for the moment. Uh, maybe below Support, because Support does give a lot of value to the team, and I really love Support. I don't really have anything negative to say about it, so I feel like Survivalist is pretty high up there. Uh, especially once you get more used to it. And again, keep in mind, this is coming from somebody who has now, I believe, a thousand hours in the game. So I've played it for quite a while. I've played all these classes a, a lot and um, have played quite a few matches, both public matches, private matches, matches with friends, and uh, just random pub matches. And this is how I feel about pretty much all of the classes as of right now. Like I said, you could move some of these around. I would still say that Sharpshooter is probably better than Commando, especially if you're competent with it, but you rarely see Sharpshooters. And there is that drawback of in pub matches, Sharpshooter is really not that strong. Whereas in like group matches, they are pretty strong. Uh, it could be said the same thing about demo. If you have a really good demo and nobody's allowed to get close to the demo, demo could easily be S tier because you're just dealing so much damage that it's ridiculous. Anyway, this is where I'd rank all of the classes in Killing Floor 2 as of right now. We'll have to see what changes in the future. Tell me your thoughts on the classes in the comments down below and where you would put them. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so very much for watching it. If you guys did enjoy this and you're not subscribed, be sure that you get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. Uh, if you'd like to help out the channel in other ways, you can do that by going down in the description below. There is a link there where you can press to join the channel as a member if you would like and support the channel financially. You could also go over to my Patreon where you could get early access to some of the videos and you could also go over to my merch store and buy merch if you would like to do that. Thank you for all of the current supporters of the channel. I really do appreciate that. Thank you guys again and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye!